The seventh generation Volkswagen Golf introduced a new chassis and lineup across its range. At the top of the specification was the R model that had arrived in the previous Mark VI generation. VW made a special effort to really stand out on the top spec model in the seventh generation, and so with a boardroom signed off and the engineering team aiming to make the Golf R the performance car for every situation, the new R arrived in 2013 and was initially offered in both three-door and five-door configuration in some markets. A facelift was shown to the world in November 2016. Many know this as the Mark 7.5 model and most dealerships had the model ready for deliveries to customers at the beginning of 2017. Differences include a new style to the front and rear lighting and bumper details, infotainment upgrades along with a digital dashboard that was optional in some markets and standard in others, and a performance upgrade that we'll cover later on in the guide. In North America, this was the 2018 model year. After the facelift, the three-door option began to be dropped from most markets, and by 2019 it had almost disappeared. However, the manual gearbox remained an option, even as more and more buyers agreed with automotive journalists of the day and opted for the DSG transmission. One option that had become especially desirable on the used market is the Spectrum Program Golf R model. These are offered in a range of 40 colours, less than 500 were produced with just shy of 200 going to North America. However, some popular YouTubers and automotive outlets signed up for a model that brought added attention to the R model before it was discontinued for the arrival of the Mark 8. Today, the Mark 7 and Mark 7.5 Golf R has become popular with tuners and those wanting to squeeze some extra potential from their hot hatchback. Volkswagen themselves nearly answered the demand with the R400 model. This was planned for release with 395 brake horsepower, but as is sometimes the way with automotive projects that customers want, but manufacturers cannot supply, the R400 was mothballed by VW as the emissions scandal swept across news outlets, leading to a rethink of pumping out an attention-grabbing high-performance Golf. The Golf R models are distinct from the rest of the Golf range not just because of the power and styling upgrades, but the Haldex 4-motion all-wheel drive that is offered as standard. Although the R is not the only Golf to be offered with an all-wheel drive system, it is the only one to utilise the system for increased performance. The ability for the rear wheels to decouple when cruising or not demanded by the terrain means increased fuel economy. The R also sits 20mm lower to the ground on a stiffer suspension setup. From experience, Volkswagen managed to tune in just enough increased feel and sharpened handling without entirely sacrificing the primary ride of the vehicle, although the secondary ride is somewhat harsher than the rest of the range. Interestingly, the Golf GTI of this generation pulls off this compromise even better, likely due to the lighter weight and the rear suspension tuning on a chassis that was developed primarily for a market of front-wheel drive vehicles. And note that the chassis beneath the Golf is common with a host of other VW Group vehicles from the Audi A3 and Q2 to the Skoda Octavia and Volkswagen Turan. Before we move on to the common faults of the Golf R to look out for, we have a list of recalls to check. Note that not all of these recalls may apply to your home market. 2016 model year Golf R's had a recall for the child lock detent levers due to damage during the production process and causing a failure of the child lock. Another recall in 2017 was made for both the 2016 and 2017 model year vehicles, although only a limited number were affected. This recall was for an incorrect placard pertaining to tyre pressure, so check the label on the car has the wheel size that has been fitted to your potential purchase, otherwise assume this recall is still outstanding. Also in 2017, a recall was made for airbag and safety belt tensioners. Not all vehicles were affected, but a quick call to your local dealer with the VIN number will confirm if you are looking at an affected model. In March 2019, a recall was announced for the rear head restraints on a batch of 2018 and 2019 model year vehicles. Not all chassis are affected. Finally, a recall was issued in June 2019 with campaign 69Q7 affecting 2014 model year vehicles due to an issue with the Takata airbags absorbing moisture over time, creating excessive pressure and bursting the inflator housing, meaning there was a potential for metal fragments to hit an occupant if the airbag was deployed. This is a serious defect and in worst case could be fatal, so it is strongly suggested to look for any record of this recall being performed and if you aren't sure, speak to your dealer. Next up are the common faults to look out for and a quick reminder to like the video if you're finding it useful and consider subscribing. First up is to listen out for any knocking or rattling noise from the rear suspension in early models. When on a test drive you may mistake this for a rattle from a trim panel or loose fixture in the storage area 
but is more likely to be caused by the suspension if you hear it under 30 miles per hour. Volkswagen recognised that models produced in 2013 had the noise after the UK Ombudsman ruled in case DRN 4049309. A revised shock absorber was introduced, but the noise remained. Today it is advisable to swap out the standard SAX shock absorbers for Bilstein ones, part number BLS19-230559. Any fluctuations in temperature are likely caused by a failed water pump. Many owners change these before they cause an issue as preventative maintenance. Note that the thermostat and water pump are one unit and so both are changed at the same time. Because of this, the part is more expensive than the average cost of a water pump alone. Rear main seals are known to fail and owners usually opt to change these at the same time as the clutch. The standard part will fail again and so is a long-term maintenance item. A switch to an aftermarket solution that is billet aluminium construction is a more permanent resolution and should last the life of the vehicle. Unfortunately, mileage rollback or clocking was slightly more common on the Golf R due to the exceptionally cheap early lease deals when the Mark 7 R was new. The low mileage limit needed to achieve these great deals led to some unscrupulous individuals taking low mile leases and then rolling back the odometer before handing the vehicle back or between services. An ECU scan by a professional may be able to find a fingerprint or record against the vehicle's mileage data, although some good old fashioned tricks can still be helpful. If the driver's seat looks more worn than you'd expect, the steering wheel is particularly worn, there are a high number of chips and scratches to the front of the vehicle or glazed and worn headlight lenses, or any seats for items like brakes and tyres that are recorded at incredibly low mileage intervals, you should take note. It may have just been driven very hard rather than had its mileage clocked, but that again may be a reason to look for another example. We should also note that a few shared common faults with the GTI, including subframe bolts, washer fluid sensor failures, retaining clips for the partial shelf failing, and the failure of the bonnet mechanism or cable. Next up is the motor and in the Golf R there is a single option of a 2 litre 4 cylinder turbocharged engine paired with a manual or DSG gearbox and Haldex or wheel drive system. However, there are several areas to note before mentioning what to look out for on the motor. Firstly, look out for modified examples. There is nothing wrong with a remapped motor to gain extra power, but as with any mechanical item, the more stress it is under, the lower its lifespan, which applies to everything from a crankshaft to a clutch plate. And while the life of the internal engine components is relatively long, make sure an owner is honest about what has been done so you know exactly what you're buying. Also, several markets across the world, including our friends down under in Australia and warmer American states, were sent a hot weather variant of the engine. These have 276 brake horsepower instead of 296 brake horsepower, although after the facelift, these were upgraded in most markets to match the rest of the world. There are three power outputs for the Golf R across the production years, excluding the previously mentioned hot weather output. For most of the world, the three outputs are 296 brake horsepower with engine code CJXC, then facelift models upgraded to 306 brake horsepower with engine code DJHA. Before the introduction of the additional exhaust filters in 2018, degrading power back to 296 brake horsepower with engine code DNUE. Note that the late engines have the highest torque figure of all the motors. Both early iterations have 380 newton meters or 280 pound feet, whereas the last update gets 400 newton meters or 295 pound feet. Fuel economy figures change over the production of the Mark 7R model due to both the upgrades by VW and changes in official testing, but an official average of 39.8 miles per gallon or 7.1 liters per 100 kilometers is generally accepted. First to note when looking at an R is that vehicles manufactured in 2013 and 2014 recorded turbo failure at a higher rate. The stop-start function could cause a lack of lubrication, resulting in overheating. Four revisions were made to resolve this issue, part number 06K145702J, followed by 06K145702N, and then 06K145722A, with the fourth and final revision generally accepted to have finally resolved the issue with part number 06K145722H. These were fitted from later 2014 onwards production vehicles. Some owners reporting drive modes not activating and so check that these activate as expected on a test drive. Coolant was another issue as mentioned earlier and that is usually related to the water pump or thermostat issue. Carbon buildup is noted particularly in markets where the R was only sold with direct injection. In markets where the R had both port and direct injection, the issue is less prevalent. Aftermarket solutions to add port injection in markets without it are available. 
Finally, the standard clutch is thought by many owners to be on the limits of power from the factory, and so if you're looking to add additional power to your R, an upgraded clutch should be budgeted for. For our pick, we would look for a 2015 produced model if on a lower budget, as these should have any early issues resolved, but with a higher budget we'd look for a Spectrum colour on the late models if they were sold in your market. Nothing brightens up a Monday morning than being the owner of the colourful car in the sea of grey in modern car parks. We also have a guide to the Mark 7 and Mark 7.5 Golf GTI and the Focus RS to check out next. Otherwise, all the best with your car search.